And now I'd like to introduce Dr. Jeff Evenson, Senior Vice President and Operations Chief of Staff of Corning, who will tell us about advancements in technology since we had our meeting last year. Jeff? Well, thank you very much, Wagi. Uh, I've been looking forward to this event for weeks, and I'm very happy to be here today. I'm excited that all of you are with us. I am excited about the trends and opportunities that are unfolding around us. And I'm excited about all of our opportunities to help shape these trends, both through our unique skill sets and especially through collaboration. As Wagi mentioned, this is Corning's second Advancing the Vision Symposium. Many of you joined us last year in the same location around this same time. And although collaboration has always been a part of Corning's DNA, last year's event was really new territory for us. As you know, it was prompted by response to our corporate video, A Day Made of Glass, which depicted Corning's vision for a connected world. In a remarkably short time, this video captured the imaginations of millions of people while demonstrating how highly engineered glass with companion technologies will help shape our world. I'll be candid. As a 160-year-old specialty glass company, we rarely think of ourselves as cool. And we are primarily used to working deep in the background. When we planned the first symposium, we were humbled, as we are today, by the caliber of people we convened, and we weren't entirely sure where the discussion would take us. But there were two things that we did know from experience. First, when you put smart, creative people together and have authentic conversations, innovation happens. Second, when you pool diverse expertise, you create synergies and come up with unexpected solutions to problems. So, while we didn't know exactly what would come out of the symposium, we knew that it would be something good. And as the event unfolded, we knew immediately that we wanted to do it again, because the discussions were so rich, the energy so strong, and the opportunities so great. Most importantly, we've heard from many of you who went on to launch new projects and form new collaborations, which was the strongest argument for doing another symposium. So thank you to those of you who have returned to continue advancing the vision, and welcome to those of you who are joining the dialogue today. I'd like to talk a little bit about what has happened since the last symposium. For starters, Corning produced a second video. Now, we, we never expected to follow with a sequel so quickly, and we're definitely not competing with Lady Gaga. Although, parenthetically, I would point out that our video did exceed her number of YouTube views for several weeks. But the pace of innovation is so fast, and the new ideas you inspired were so exciting that we immediately expanded our vision. We also recognized the need to provide a little more context to help a general audience understand what they were seeing. So we created an unpacked version with descriptive narration. A Day Made of Glass 2 follows the same family, but showcases different applications. Have, have you all seen the video? Okay, great. Um, I won't use your limited time to show it now, but let's talk briefly about what the video portrayed, and more importantly, the larger paradigm at the heart of it. Like our first video, A Day Made of Glass 2 depicts a world with seamless delivery of real-time information, where people stay connected in a very genuine way through natural tools and interfaces that put information at their fingertips. But this video takes us into new locations, into the classroom where teachers and students interact in dynamic ways that unleash creativity, into a hospital where telemedicine is a reality and where advanced surfaces play an active role in improving patient health, and outdoors where virtual images enhance the visitor experience. It also depicts some of the behind-the-scenes technology driving these products to show a world of devices that are not only sophisticated in terms of their technical capabilities, but also smart in terms of energy consumption. A Day Made of Glass 2 had more than 1 million views in its first week alone, and ultimately joined its predecessor as one of the top five corporate videos of all time. And once again, most of the feedback expressed was enthusiastic for this world of new possibilities. 
Of course, there was a little eye rolling about some things that seemed far fetched. Uh, last time, we took some ribbing for the transparent displays with transparent batteries. This time, a few critics were distracted by the dinosaurs. But while you can debate the details, the underlying paradigm is clear. We are moving toward an experience economy, a world of ubiquitous displays with lifelike images, natural interfaces based on voice, touch, and gestures, increased mobility so we can access and manipulate information whenever and wherever we want it, and flexible environments that break down barriers and allow optimal collaboration. So let's talk about what's required to make this worldview a reality. Devices must be thin and lightweight to ensure portability. They must feature high pixel counts to create super sharp images. They must blend seamlessly into our environment by conforming to the right shape and scaling to the appropriate size. They must be durable and damage resistant to withstand harsh conditions and repeated use. And they must have intuitive interfaces and a touch-friendly aesthetic. This world also requires tremendous bandwidth delivered through high-speed connections that are always on. It depends on sophisticated software to facilitate inter-device communication, enable new forms of interaction, and provide new data visual visualization and processing capabilities. It requires electronics-ready surfaces, and it needs limitless storage, access through the cloud, and supported by robust data centers. Finally, the technology should use limited power and be environmentally friendly. It's a pretty tough set of requirements, and no company will do it alone. It will require an ecosystem with contributions from hardware companies and software developers specializing in both operating systems and applications, from information and entertainment content providers, health and human services providers, materials companies, industrial designers, retailers, and more. But together, we can get there. So how far away are we from bringing this world to life? Some capabilities are right around the corner. The proliferation of tablets, including significantly less expensive tablets, is coming like a freight train. In the past year, we've seen exciting product launches, including the new iPad, the Microsoft Surface, the Google Nexus tablet, the Samsung Galaxy, and the Amazon Kindle Fire. Large horizontal and vertical work surfaces with interactive touch capabilities are being readied and deployed now. And as software and touch technology advances, Corning expects classrooms around the globe to adopt interactive tables like the ones in our video. Very large touch scale and in interactivity are a little farther out, but not too much. Many of you have had the opportunities to see and experience the Microsoft Perceptive Pixel 82-inch capacitive touch display. They've continued to advance that technology and are exploring ways to dramatically lower the cost to enable widespread adoption. HP's Vantage Point wall is allowing users to interact with videos, applications, and live web feeds on a 132-inch touch surface. And Qualcomm and others are enabling seamless exchanges between smartphones and high-definition displays through the new Miracast Wi-Fi standard that is being demonstrated here today. Of course, some applications are probably a bit farther into the future. Large-scale transparent displays for augmenting reality are in the lab and not quite ready for prime time. But we'll get there. In the meantime, Google is helping to create seamless access to the digital world via wearable smartphones. So, there have been some very significant developments over the past year, and we're extremely excited about the momentum that we're seeing and feeling. I also want to share a few examples of how Corning is continuing to help realize the vision. I promise this is not going to be a product pitch, that's not what today is about, but as a component maker, Corning's technologies are generally not visible and often not well understood. So I want to show you how we can help enable some of your innovations and hopefully spark some new ideas about possibilities we can create together. First, we're doing our part to enable more lifelike images as we move to a world of pervasive displays. Next generation display technologies require higher resolution, faster refresh rates, and improved color rendering. Smaller, most, more densely packed transistors can deliver those attributes, but they place tough new requirements on display glass, including exceptional surface smoothness, 
the ability to handle much higher processing temperatures and very strong dimensional stability. We've leveraged Corning's proprietary fusion process and formulate, formulation expertise to introduce a family of glasses called Lotus. Lotus features a super smooth electronics ready surface. In fact, our fusion process produces glass so pristine, a rejectable particle is equivalent to a mustard seed in a football field. Lotus also enables a 200 degrees Celsius higher temperature and 50% greater dimensional stability than ordinary display glass. This allows display makers to place more transistors on the glass, creating much more vivid images. Now, we've all enjoyed the benefits of 250 plus pixel per inch displays for mobile devices. But as large touch displays become more common, the close distances from eye to screen will require resolutions at least as sharp on these big displays. Lotus is just our first entry into glasses for next generation displays and provides a path for high resolution at all screen sizes. We will continue to work closely with panel makers to develop new glass compositions to meet their evolving needs. We're also developing technologies to dissolve the boundaries between the virtual and natural world. First, we work closely with Sony to develop edge-to-edge -edge televisions. No question, the Bravia is a beautiful set. But when you watch TV, your picture still has a border. So now we're using some of our optical cap capabilities to create a truly borderless TV, what we call an infinite edge. We've still got a long way to go, but here's a look at an early prototype. We're displaying a wide angle image on three displays. On the right, you see two of the displays, each with a five millimeter bezel placed as closely as we could get them together. On the left, there are also two displays, but we've added an engineered glass overlay that creates the illusion of a continuous display. Building tiled displays or immersive wraparound displays are exciting opportunities to us. So stay tuned. Now last year, Wendell shared a prototype of our ultra-slim flexible glass. We're commercializing this product now. Willow glass is five times thinner than standard di display glass. In fact, it's about 8% thinner than a dollar bill. The potential applications range from conformable display devices and advantage touch sensors to solar energy applications. And glass this thin and flexible helps move us toward the world of authentic interfaces and natural form factors. Finally, I want to highlight some of the fiber optic technology that will power the world in our video. Corning scientists invented the world's first low loss optical fiber in 1970, and since then we've continued to increase the capacity and reduce the complexity of optical networks. Today's optical fiber can transmit more than 15 terabits of data per second over a distance of 7,000 kilometers. That means it would take approximately 25 seconds to download the entire iTunes music catalog and transmit it from Miami to London. But we believe that we haven't scratched the surface of what's possible or what's necessary for a truly connected world. For example, even with significant advances in compression algorithms and chipsets, bringing innovative new capabilities to life will require massive bandwidth. For example, consider a high definition 82 inch television. To get the same resolution you have on an iPad today, you'd need about 97 times as many pixels. So let's look at a few ways that Corning is using its expertise in optical technology to increase the efficiency and availability of high-speed communication networks. We believe that the future will combine the enormous bandwidth of fiber optics with the mobility of RF. In fact, the more bandwidth you want to deliver over RF, the closer you need to get to fiber. That's where indoor distributed antenna systems come in. They improve wireless coverage in areas that usually can't receive strong signals. Indoor mobile data usage is already three times greater than outdoor usage, and is expected to grow more than 80% by 2016. So signal strength and reliability are increasingly critical. We know that a glass company is not going to create the connected world from our video on its own, which is why we're so excited to collaborate with all of you. So what are the challenges that we face as a group and the issues we'd like to address? First, we want to make sure that the paradigm is right. Have we identified the complete set of elements and challenges? Are we articulating it correctly? Let's face it, 
It's a mouthful to say on-demand information from cloud-based digital hubs delivered through ubiquitous and robust high-speed connections to thin client devices that make high-definition displays and intuitive interfaces omnipresent. So what, <laughs> thank you. So what is the right name for this paradigm? Second, we need to make sure that we are working together to create an ecosystem that allows us to communicate across platforms and between devices. So far, the ability to access content and communicate between devices such as tablets and TVs has not changed as dramatically as the devices themselves. So it's definitely time to address that. Third, we need to determine how to make the most exciting technologies economically viable. Those of you who were here last year probably remember Vice Admiral John Richardson's request for a panoramic touch table for mission control in submarines. The technology is not nearly as challenging as the economics of such a specialized application. Can we work together to find a way to make high value, highly specialized technologies viable without economies of scale? Or said differently, can we create economies of scale in the right places to make sophisticated custom installations affordable. Finally, we need good judgment about what technologies to pursue, and we need to prevent complacency and a stubborn adherence to the status quo from limiting the pace of development and the magnitude of the benefits that we deliver. This becomes even more challenging as the tough economy forces companies to prioritize and make choices. We must make sure we're not sacrificing life-enhancing innovations for short-term practicalities. So we've got our work cut out for us, which means uh, I should probably start, stop talking so that we can dig in. <laughs> today I'm excited to learn about your needs and hear your ideas. And then in today's final session, we hope to create some action items that we can work on together to advance the vision be between now and next year's symposium. I'll just close with a few data points that underscore how fast our world is changing. One in seven Google searches are now mobile, and by the end of this year, the number of mobile connected devices will exceed the number of people on Earth. Touch panel shipments are expected to increase 25% this year over last, and end user demand for wireline and mobile broadband traffic is expected to increase from less than 10,000 petabytes per month in 2010 to more than 116,000 petabytes per month in 2015. These trends confirm the fact that consumers are demanding better experiences and a much more connected world. It's up to the people in this room to determine how far we go and how fast we get there. So thank you. I'm excited to hear from you the rest of the day.